Hey guys, welcome back to Zhongwang's channel. You're watching HLMS, one of the most detailed Gundam lore series. Today, we're going to talk about the most ignored third generation Gundam, Gundam Lazio. This is the third video in the Pentalogy. Also, Lazio doesn't have many choices on the visuals except the game, so I'll try my best to make it a bit more active. These episodes take a long time to research, write, and edit. Kindly hit the subscribe button and the bell next to it for some support. All right, turn on your CC sub, grab your snacks and drinks, let's go. After all Gundam and second generation Gundams were completed, CB has started the first generation Gundams development. The development included five Gundams. Aside from the four Gundams that we saw in the anime, Gundam Lazio belongs to the first generation Gundams too. Lazio is named after the archangel Razio. The meaning of the name is Secrets of the Gods. Just like the naming, Lazio is not developed to participate in armed interventions, but rather for missions like gathering data and intelligence. Feather is an artificial super intelligence, but to get the most accurate data, it needs an observer to help deliver the information. This is exactly Lazio's job, which is why the nickname of the Gundam is Observer of the Battlefields. Since Lazio is more like eyes and ears of Vether, not many people know its existence. Lazio is classified as one of the top secrets of the organization. Despite Ian Vashti having built the Lazio, he doesn't know what's in the Gundam's black box nor the internal systems. However, despite the lack of information based on his experience, he did propose a suggestion about the Lazio's design. Before he was recruited into CB, he was an AEU military mechanic one of the main mechanics that developed the AEU Helion Initium. Initium's propulsion system is concentrated on the upper body. This design allows it to still have a decent flight ability during MS mode. The same logic is applied on the Lazio. Two large GM verniers are installed into the shoulder of the Gundam. Combining the GN drive with the GN verniers on the shoulders, Lazio's atmospheric flight ability is better than Initium, but slightly worse than the new model, AU Helion Medium. Due to unknown reasons, Lazio is the only third generation Gundam to have a face fan. Lazio consumes the least particles out of every third generation Gundams, as it wasn't developed to participate in armed interventions. Lazio's armaments are mainly for basic performance, it has a GM beam rival, presumably sharing the same technology used by the second and third generation Gundam's GM beam rival. The rival has two sensors, one in the clear part and one in the cylindrical part. Lazio will most likely attack from long distance to hide its existence, so these two sensors play an important role in the long distance attack. Other than the sensors, this rival is lighter and slimmer than those used by other Gundams. Well, the weight is light for easier carry, but it comes with a small GN condenser, which means the particle consumption is faster. If the GN condenser is emptied, no shots will come out of the rival until the GN condenser is reviewed again. To prevent the possibility of GN condensers being emptied, an alarm is installed in the cockpit to remind the pilot when the energy is low. Defensively, Lazio has a GN shield mounted on the left forearm, but it's not as advanced as the fellow third generation Gundams because it's not supposed to be on the front lines. A pair of GM beam sabers are standard armaments for the third generation Gundams. Lazio got them stored inside the shield. For the GN drive, Lazio will be using the GN drive on all Gundam. But because Tolamsam is locked before AD2308, Lazio cannot use the Tolamsam system. Like other third generation Gundams, Lazio is linked with Feda. Again, optical camouflage is available for every third generation Gundams. Now, you might be thinking Lazio is going to be vulnerable if it engages with an MS team, but Lazio got a support unit. The support unit is the predecessor of the GN arms, which is GN Sefa, designed by Ian Vashti and produced by Linda Vashti. The couple produced a total of eight GN Sefa in Crown Fab. Like I said, GN Sefa is the prototype of GN arms, but smaller. The the reason for the 8 unit production is because the more GN Sefer is deployed, the true power of it is better. By itself, GN Sefer is a good support unit in general, but the true power and feature is to dock with Lazio, increasing the latter's firepower and ability. Also, GN Sefer is versatile as no matter in space or atmosphere, it can operate on its own. GN Sefer is formed by four parts. The first part is the detachable nose unit, known as the GN pod. When GN Sefer needs to dock with Lazio, Lazio, the pilot will be leaving with the GM pod. GM pod got a pair of GM Falcons in it. 
is a basic self-defense weapon. After the docking is finished, the pilot will be circling around the battlefield in the GM pod, constantly releasing GM particles from its GM condenser, widening the jamming range to make sure no one knows the existence of CB. The second part is the core block. It's the body of the GM Sefer and powered by a large GM condenser. When GM Sefer is docking with Lazio, the core block will be connected to the Lazio's GM drive, linking the GM drive with GM Sefer's large GM condenser. The third and fourth part is the GM proto bits. The size is large as the miniaturization is not successful yet. To control the bits, Lazio and GM Sefer got the bit control system. Bit control system combines the usage of software and hardware. It's used to remotely control bit type or fang type weapons. This system can be controlled by the pilot or AI. If the control is transferred to the pilot, the pilot must manually control the bits. However, human pilots cannot manually control the system as human's reaction type is a liability, which is why AI assistance is required. If the pilot is innovate or innovator, with some practice, they can use quantum brainwaves to mentally change the bits or fangs action. Both Lazio and GN Sefer have a bit control system installed. The one on GN Sefer is slightly inferior. When GN Sefer is docked with Lazio, the control will be transferred to Lazio. But GN Sefer still has part of the control, which means the pilot in GN pod can help with the GN proto bits control if there are too many bits deployed. All right, back to the GM Proto bits. GM Sefer can deploy them on its own. The bits have an independent propulsion system, which means flying in the atmosphere or in space is not a problem. The bits have a beam gun mounted inside, which means the bits can be controlled to attack one target from different angles. Also, due to the size being quite big, the bits can be used as makeshift shields to protect allies or the GM Sefer itself. Time for the exciting part. When the GM Sefer is combined with the Lazio. The name of it is Sefer Lazio. Sefer means book in Hebrew. Lazio means secret of the gods. The combined form's name means book of angel or Sefer Lazio Hamalak if you want to know the real life reference. During the combined form, Lazio's GN drive will be connected to GN Sefer's large GN condenser, giving Sefer Lazio higher mobility. The GN proto bits does more than just deploy to attack a target. They are now part of the ambag. Sefer Lazio has a total of five forms. By deploying different numbers of GN Sefer, you will get different variants. Weapon-wise, no matter which form, GM Beam Rival, GM Beam Sabers, and GM Shield is available. The weapon change is only the number of GM Proto bits equipped. Let's start with Form 1, a basic combined form with one core block and two GM Proto bits. Form 2 requires two GM Sefer. Lazio will be docked with one core block and carry four GM Proto bits. The additional two bits are on the feet. Form 3 required three GM Sefer stacking two core blocks together and carrying two more bits on the back, which means Form 3 has six GM Proto bits. Other than just deploying the bits, Form 3 is more like firepower suppression as the six bits can fire together or fire towards different directions. Form 4 required 3 to 5 GN Sephers, one core block with 6 to 10 GN proto bits depending on the needs. The extra bits will be stored on each side of the block. The position of the bits will resemble a book being opened, fitting the name of Book of Angel. Instead of deploying all bits at once, Form 4 will deploy two bits during one attack cycle. When the first cycle of bits run out of particles or energy, the next pair will fill in to keep no gaps. Form 5 is the strongest form, requiring four GN Sephers, stacking two core blocks together and carrying eight GM proto bits. Instead of a wave attack pattern, this form is designed to launch all egg bits at the same time to eliminate the target in a short time. Before the bits are deployed, the egg bits can be used to increase the proportion of Sephir ratio when all eight of them open together, it looks like the wing of the Archangel. Since Form 5 will deploy all eight bits together, Haro is no longer enough to assist the control, so the pilots in the GM pods will help to control the bits to relieve the stress. GM Sefer will often deploy it as a team, so Lazio can always choose the best form based on the current battle situation. Also, if GM proto bits are shut down or any problems happen to them, GM pod can head back to the supply base and carry new GM proto bits 
send them to Cephalasio and dock again. Lazio is one of the first generation Gundams that was finished early. Unlike the other four Gundams, Lazio was activated five years before the armed intervention started. Feather selected Grey Violento as the Gundam Meister of Lazio. Grave is an innovate under Veda's direct command. For GN Sefa, Hexafermi is the leader of the GN Sefa team. The rest of the units are piloted by Haro. AD 2302, Rasio was completed and Grave was testing it in space. All Gundam followed behind to provide testing support at the same time. The testing showed no problems. Grave headed back to the hangar and Ian approached him. Ian asked Grave about the Rasio's performance, especially the shoulder thrusters. Grave replied calmly but giving high praise at the same time. Grave was sent to investigate one of the Gundam Meister candidates, Subject E-57. At the same time, HRL deployed special forces to capture the failed super soldier. Hexa had a mission in the same destination, so he joined Grave and both pilots hit the Rasio and GN Sefer a few kilometers away from the city. Grave sneaked into the city, saved the Gundam Meister candidate by killing one of the HRL special forces officers. This action drew the attention of the HRL special forces. Grave headed back into the Lazio and spotted three tilling ground type units. He used three accurate beam shots to destroy them. The mission was done. Both Grave and Hexa left the battlefield. Meanwhile, Cho Acrystica stayed behind to remove the wreckage that proves CB's existence. Next mission was in the AEU region. Last year was surrounded by 12 AEU Helium Medium unexpectedly. Grave concluded that he needs to finish them in 47 seconds, otherwise there's a chance one of the MS will escape and report the existence of Rasio. Grave was clutch, finished the battle in 46 seconds. A support team from CB arrived and cleaned up the wreckage. Shortly, some fake intel was picked up by Feather. Subject E57 was apparently caught by the Union. Grave arrived at the Union region to prevent being discovered. Grave hit the Lazio and activated the optical camouflage. Then 16 Union Rialdos were deployed and Grave was confident that this was a trap. The fake intel was sent by HRL's Next Generation Technology Development Laboratory. They were trying to use Union forces to capture the Lazio. Grave decided not to report to Veda and wanted to find out who's watching the battlefield. Hexa arrived with three Gen Sephers. Lazio came out and flew into the sky. Combining the parts from the GN7 team, Sefa Lazio Form 3 was formed. With the GM pots circling around the battlefield, the Union Rialdo team was unable to call for backups. Severacio clearly has the advantage, shooting down the Union Rialdo team with its GM proto bits. Suddenly, Severacio was hit from the side. Grave spotted a Tiran Kiatu and sent the bits to attack. None of the bits hit the Tiran Kiatu, but instead the bits were all shot down by the Tiran Kiatu. Gunner Meister X74 arrived with more GN Sephers and Severacio was changed to Form 4. Tiran Kiatu was unable to dodge some of the wave attack from the bits, but Grave was informed that time was up as they had to leave before Union's reinforcements arrived. Grave stopped the attack and retreated with the rest of the GN Sephers. Tiran Kiatu was retreated at the same time too. Unfortunately, Lazio's existence was not hidden anymore as Fawn Spark and his mercenary group saw the battle of Sefer Lazio and Tiran Kiatu. Fawn realized that either MS would be worth a lot of money, so he borrowed the Agarisa Type 7 from AEU, attempting to capture either of them. The mercenary group began to spread rumors. They caught the Tiran Kiatu's attention, but it never showed up as one of the pilots of the Tiran Kiatu felt like it was a trap. Grave was observing and Veda informed him that the Tiran Kiatu left. Grave noticed the MS-4 was just a few AU Helion medium, so he decided to engage the MS team to stop the rumors. It was a trap. Fawn ordered the crew to retreat and used light wave communication to lure Grave to come out. Fawn asked Grave whether Grave wanted to know how he figured out CB's existence. Grave wanted to know the answer and stepped out of the cockpit. Suddenly, the Agarisa jumped and captured the Lazio with its plasma field. Lazio withstood the electric shock. Grave was in pain, but he kept his mouth shut. Grave endured the pain. He aimed at the Agarisa and destroyed it with the GM beam rival. Fawn escaped and Grave was about to kill him, but Feather withdrew the kill order as Fawn became one of the potential candidates now. Back to space, Sephiracio Fawn 5 was in testing. Grave deployed all 8 GM proto bits, but was unable to control them all together. The testing was finished with the assistance from X74 and Hexa. X74 pointed out that either Grave needs more assistance or a better pilot is needed for Rasio. Grave accepted the doubt from X74 and asked to start the training of controlling the bits. Soon, a mock battle between Gundam Vaj, Physical and Lazio began. Hexa piloted the GN Sefer, supporting Grave and Lazio. Hexa deployed the bits, but Vaj, Physical blocked all the beam shots with his GM field. 
Telia aimed at the Lazio and fired the GM missiles. The missile attack was a bait. Telia used the GM beam cannon as the actual attack. The beam was about to hit Lazio. Hexa used his GN7 and overload the GN condenser, trying to block the attack with a large amount of GM particles, but ended up with GN7 exploding due to overload. Grave immediately grabbed the GM port, rushed back to the base, and Hexa was treated. Grave was sent to recruit the Gundam Meisters. After the recruitment was done, Veda asked Grave to kill all witnesses. The first on the list is the pilots of the Tilen Kia 2. Grave accessed Veda and found that not all witnesses were killed. Von Spark is alive because Veda withdrew the kill order. Solan Ibrahim is alive because an unknown authority changed the report. Grave noticed that both are alive because because they are considered as potential candidates. If he can prove the pilots on the Tiran Kiatu are not a threat, but potential candidates, he can affect the kill order. Grave sent a secret invitation to the Tiran Kiatu pilots, and they arrived at the destination. Grave explained his intentions. The Tiran Kiatu attacked, and Grave asked Hexa to transfer the bits control to him. Even though the Tiran Kiatu shot down one of the bits, but the pilots were deliberately slowing down. Grave saw the chance and disabled the Tiran Kiatu. Further received the data at both Delta. Alvin Bedelia and Neon Lard finds to the potential candidate list. As Feather noticed that both pilots didn't intend to report Lazio's existence or Graves' invitation. Back to space, one of the Innovates, Besai Pei, betrayed the organization and started the Chrome Fab rebel. Besai believed that Grave is an obstacle. He installed his consciousness into Hexa, leading Hexa to shoot Grave. Dr. Morano arrived and restarted Grave's heart, despite Grave being badly wounded, but he insisted to stop Besai with Sephiracio. Outside of Chrome Fab, X74 was engaging two GN cannons, she managed to deactivate the GN cannons with the Gundam Artemis trial system. Beside attack X74 with his Iron Gundam, just before the fatal blow, Grave arrived and knocked the Iron Gundam away. Due to the GN drive being on the Artemis, Grave decided to save GN particles by only using GN Beam Saber. Sephiracio got 20 minutes before the large GN condenser was emptied, so Grave was closing in to quickly end the battle. Beside, tried to install his consciousness into Grave, but unsuccessful. Grave already disconnected from Veda as he knew he was about to die. Grave finally saw a chance, stabbing the Iron Gundam and killing Beside before he finished transferring his consciousness again. In exchange, Grave life was at the end before Sephiracia was completely shut off. Grave left his last word to Hexa, telling Hexa to stand again and live on. In the end, Grave and Sephiracia went into an abyss, drifting in space. After the Chrome Fab rebel, Beside is still alive as the one Grave killed was a clone. The real Beside was in one of the GN cannons. Beside removed his data and stored his consciousness copy in the Iron Gundam. Grave was confirmed dead and Veda won't retrieve Sephiracio as it doesn't contain a GN drive. Hexa became a private agent that works under direct command from Veda. A neck bomb was equipped on Hexa to prevent betrayal. Despite Rasio remained as top secret, its data heavily influenced the future development. The shoulder verniers are improved and later became part of the Bo'o Gundam's design. GN Sephir is considered as a success. Fuzz GN arms and all riser are developed. The concept of Rasio docking with GN Sephir is kept, which is why GN arms can dock with the Gundams, double O Gundam and O riser will combine into double O riser. The big control system is a huge success as this system is used on the Gundams or Innovator MS like Gundam, Salone, Zuvai, Cheridim Gundam, Gattes, Reborns, etc. After analyzing the data of GN Sefa and Avalanche Exchange Dash, GN Arms is developed. GN Arms has two variants for now, GN Arms Type E. E stands for Exchange, which means it's for extra use. GN Arms Type D. D stands for Denimus, which means it's for Denimus use. This may not be official, but I read an article as a kid. It's mentioned that CB originally has GN arms for every Gundam. GN arms is developed as CB cannot make new Gundams. Instead, they developed GN arms to enhance that Gundam's specific ability. Like the GN Sever, GN arms can operate on its own as it's powered by a large GN condenser. Within the limited time, GN arms can provide support with its amazing mobility for high-speed combat and multiple armor for firepower support. Let's look at the weapons. No matter type D or type E, a pair of claws are on the leg-like part of the GN arms. It's very similar to the dash unit's design, but it's just a claw with no ability to generate GN beam saber. Both types share a pair of large size GN cannon. The cannons are comparable to Vaj's GN bazooka when it comes to Firepower. They are located at the top section of the GN arms. It's powerful but comes with huge consumption. The full power of it can only be seen with GN arms 
docked with a Gundam. Moving on to more specific weapons, starting from the Type D. The combat style of Denimus is long range attack, so Type D comes with long range attack weapons. On the right side of the GN Arms Type D, you will see the GN Twin Rival. Normally, it's folded, but it will unfold itself quickly during long range attack. The GN Twin Rival is slightly weaker than the large sized GN Cannons, but both weapons can fire together to destroy a battleship easily. The left side of the GN Arms Type D has a large size missile missile container is stored with hundreds of GM particles charged missiles. The missiles are always ready with very good destructive power and can form a barrage easily. GN Arms Type E is designed for Exia, so its weapons are basically bigger versions of Exia's weapons. On both sides, you will see a pair of large sized GN swords. It's not that different from the GN sword on Exia. Think of it as the GN sword got bigger. Just like the GN sword, the large size GN sword has excellent cutting power and is able to penetrate GN fields too. Instead of making the large size GN sword fold and unfold, a pair of GN beam gun is mounted inside the large size GN sword. Obviously, they are weaker than the large size GN cannons. However, because the size is bigger, so it's better than a normal GN beam rifle shot, it's also able to fire rapidly. Allow me to quickly add in the MB settings. GN Arms Type E has a new setting thanks to trying to increase MB cells. The MB version is much closer to GN Seva. GN Arms Type E is divided into core unit and booster unit. Both units can operate individually. Other than that, the parts are separated even more, like a block system, which means Exia can choose to equip core or boost unit only. When the GN armor is fully docked by rotating the parts to the back, it has a new mode called high speed mode. The weapons on the MB version are pretty much unchanged. I would say it's expanded. Large size GN sword is more than just a physical sword. The blade can split and form the large size GM beam sword. The leg light parts on the Type E are like dash unit. It can unfold to reveal the whole claw and is able to generate GM beam sabers in the middle. That's it for the MB setting. I can't provide you more info as I don't even have it. GN arms can support in three different ways. As a standalone support unit, docking with the corresponding Gundam to show its full power, or stored in an assault container with the Gundam to transport between space and Earth. Also, after docking with the Gundam, GN arms plus the Gundam can form a GM field for defense. As the development of Jinx was completed, Ms. Sumanagi asked Ian and Lasset Aaron to retrieve the GN arms so Patel Miles could always get ready to counter a large scale attack. In the first time the Gundams engaged the Jinx team, they were in huge disadvantage. Lee Bongzi Almark hacked the Veda and shut down the Gundams. Ms. Sumanagi changed the operating system to make free Gundams move again. However, Tilia was the key factor on why Vach was unable to change the system. Lockon took the hit to protect Telia. Right before Patrick calls, I will try to stab the Vaj again. Lasse arrived with the GN Arms Type E to support. Lasse disarmed Patrick's Jinx and destroyed some Jinxes to force them retreat. Back on the Patala Mouse, Setsuna wanted to stop the UN forces attack on Team Trinity and figure out why Gundams existed. So Lasse went to Earth with Setsuna in the assault container. On Earth, Ali Al Zajis already hijacked the Zulonle Zuvai and shot down the Zulonle Ains. Right before he went for Nana Trinity, Iksha came down and fought the Zuvai. Lasse was a supporting Exia, but Sarges hindered both Exia and Assault Container easily. Sarges was pressuring the Exia without too much effort. Eolia was killed at the same time and Exia's Toamza was unlocked. With the Toamza speed, Setsuna took out Zuwai's shield and Sarges retreated. Meanwhile in space, UN forces found the location of Ptolemaos and sent the Jinx team to eliminate the Gundams. Vaj and Kyrios were struggling as they were facing 26 Jinx at the same time. Vaj was surrounded again after Toamza was finished. Lokon came and wiped out a few Few Jinx with the missile barrage. Then Lokon used Toamsam to outrun the Jinx force and attack the UN force motherships. He took out two battleships. Right before he went for the third battleship, Sarges arrived and destroyed the GN Arms Type D. Despite Lokon being unable to snipe due to his right eye being injured, he overpowered Sarges and chopped off the Zuai's right arm. Suddenly, a Jinx came and kamikazed the Denimus. Sarges figured out that Lokon's right side was blinded. Zuai deployed the GN Fangs and attacked from the blind spot. Denimus was severely damaged. Out of wanting to 
the revenge for his family, Lokong asked Harold to send the Denimus back to Ptolemaeus while he connected the aimer from Denimus' cockpit to one of the large-sized GN cannon wreckage. Lokong put his life as a bet. He wanted to use his life to kill Sarges. Lokong deliberately exposed his location and lured Sarges charging towards him. Sarges shot the large-sized GN cannon, causing an explosion. Lokong defeated Suvai, burning half of Sarges' body. Even though revenge was done, the explosion took Lokong's life. In the final stage of Operation Fallen Angels, Exher and GN Arms Type E was carried by a soul container. They engaged Aluvato and Alejandro Corner. Exher combined with the GN Arms Type E, forming the GN Armor. The two pilots cooperated and shot down all Aluvato's large GN fangs. GN Armor Type E charged towards the Aluvato, cut off and shot off both large close combat arm on the Aluvato. Aluvato's side beam cannons hit the GN Arms Type E twice, causing severe damage, leading to an explosion. Lasse was badly injured, but Exher came out and sliced the Aluvato open. Although Exher defeated the Aruvaron successfully, Graham Eka came and settled the final score, resulting in both GM Flag and Exher being severely damaged. Few months later, Von Spark was announced as Traitor A13. He acted on his own and located Vedas Terminal with his insane plan. By blocking the sunlight with the asteroid, Ashes, Fawn located the electricity priority and found Vedas terminal. He invited Hexa to come with him, and both pilots went to the dark side of the moon. Libongs cannot allow Fawn to take control of the terminal, so he deployed Astraea, Sodalsud, Abuhu Type F Black, Pluton Black, and Black Sephirasio. Black Sephirasio is the replica of the original Sephirasio. It's still formed by the same replica of Lazio and Gian Sepha. Black Sephirasio is a 100% replica that features no changes. Everything is the same as the original Sephirasio, except the replica is powered by Gian Drive Tau. Since Black Gian Sephir is made again, I assume if Libongs deployed more Black Gian Sephirs, it's possible that Black Sephirasio can choose more forms. The replica of Rasio is piloted by a clone of Hexavermi, while the Black GN Sephir is piloted by a clone of Grave Violento. The clone Hexa met with the real Hexa. The clone Hexa told the real Hexa that he's happier and not a miserable being like the real Hexa. The real Hexa stated that he found the value of life and moved on to put the tragic past behind. The clone and real Hexa battled against each other. Clone Hexa summoned seven GM proto bits with the assistance from the clone grave. The real Hexa was struggling as he was surrounded by the bits. Real Hexa activated Sudausu Type F's Toramza, managed to shoot all the bits down and killed the clone grave who was sitting in the black GM port. Clone Hexa was mocking real Hexa that Feather can always copy a new grave. Real Hexa sent him into reality check as he explained how in relevant a clone life is. The clone Hexer was triggered. Real Hexer used this chance and finished the battle with a slash. Black Sephirasio was destroyed and Sadaosu Type F was severely damaged. After the battle was over, Reborn CB retrieved the wreckage of the Black Sephirasio, repaired and repainted it back to the original Sephirasio. This is known as the Sephirasio Unit 2. Once again, this is the same as the original Sephirasio except powered by a large GN condenser. After Fawn Spark saved Leaf Recitativo, Besai Pain noticed that he's no longer in the six comrades due to him transferring his consciousness into a new body. He planned to get Leaf's body back so he can control the observers and start his own plan. Besai launched in the Iron Skandam, searching for Fawn and shot down the ESF forces that was after him. Just when Besai was thinking he's now invincible, Hexa came with the Lazio Unit 2 and engaged the Iron Skandam. However, the battle didn't last long as Ein Skandam completely overpowered the Lazio Unit 2. Beside was in the rush, so he didn't kill Hexa. Hexa was injured and Lazio was immobilized. Hayana came down with the GN Sefa. Hexa explained to her that the enmity between him and Beside is personal, which was why Hexa doesn't want her to be involved. With the Lazio Unit 2 completely immobilized, Hayana said she knew where to get new Gundams. The answer is Fawn Spark, as he collected the wreckage of the Farish Gundam replicas from the Feather Terminal. Battle. Both of them met Fawn and Hanayo. Hexa received the Sadaosu Type F Unit 2. Hayana went with him with her GN Sefer. They were ready to fight Beside. In space, Beside attacked the new observers. Before he did more damage to the place, Hexa sniped him from far away. Regenerate Jetta controlled the Sadaosu Type F's GN drive, shutting it off and allowed Ice Gundams. Aravaron cannon to destroy it. However, Sudaosu Type F is piloted by a Haro. Hexa and Hayana crashed onto the Ice Gundam. Hexa opened the cockpit, asking Beside to apologize to his friend. Beside laughed and pulled out the gun, but Hexa shot him in the head and finally avenged 
grave. AD 2314, Hexa calculated the possible location of Gray's body and decided to head out to bring the body back for a proper barrel. Sephirasio Unit 2 was equipped with the same long-range booster and surplus particle tank like the ones used by the ESF force. Hexa found Grave's body just before the Els conflict started. Thanks for watching. I can't believe I'm halfway done with the whole development history. Lazio is surprisingly easy in my opinion because the variants are not that complicated. The story is more complicated. Due to Lazio's appearance is only in the novel, I try my best to give a less boring visual. But thanks for watching it to the end. Now, I'll try my best to finish the Double Gundam episode ASAP, but I need a break first. I've spent a long time writing Ixia and Lazio together, back to back without any rest. It will be awesome if you subscribe and hit the bell next to it. Join my Discord. Thank you Zesubo and Eric for doing the photos. All links in the description and see you next time. Goodbye.